All right, so without further ado, I'm gonna jump right into it. Let's talk about the main gear that you're gonna need for iPad music production. Obviously, number one, you're gonna need an iPad. Um, the iPad that I use is uh, this guy right here. This is the 12.9 inch iPad Pro. Uh, this is actually the 2018 version. I think the iPad Air, the new one, is around 500 or 600. And then, you know, from there you're going up to Pro territory, which is 700 uh, to 900. My recommendation, you know, if you're looking for your first iPad for music production, definitely check out the iPad Air. I feel like it's the sweet spot for music production. It's got a lot of the pros of, you know, what you would get out of an iPad Pro, um, but it's also got some balances. You know, you lose a couple features, but they're not super important features that you're losing, but it strikes the balance between price and performance in my opinion. So definitely check out the iPad Air. Um, if you're watching this right now live, you can even pop into the description of this video and I've listed all of the gear that I'm talking about today down in the description. You can check out those links. They are affiliate links. But it'll cost you nothing extra to use them and it definitely helps helps out the channel if you're looking to purchase something anyway but yeah so we got our ipad and you got to make sure you have your ipad loaded with a decent daw so i'll show you my daw folder right here um I'll pop it up here so you can see it better my uh the one i use the most is beatmaker 3. Um, that's my daw of choice it's the one i'm pretty much always using. I have used Cubasis. Cubasis is pretty dope. You know, if you're more of somebody that's doing, you know, like standard traditional recording and whatnot, you know, Cubasis 3 might be the thing for you. There's tons of others. Obviously, I'm not naming them all here, but my recommendation as of right now is Beatmaker 3. It's gotten better as far as stability goes. So, all right, so quick recap, we got our iPads and we got it loaded with a DAW. So that's a digital audio workstation for those of you that don't know. That's where you're gonna be making your music in. The next thing you're gonna need is an audio interface. Now an audio interface is, for those of you that don't know, is what you're gonna be connecting to your iPad um, in order to get sound into the iPad from you know various hard, hardware or um, different things you want to plug in, instruments, um, microphones, things like that, more gear that we're going to talk about in a second. So it's also going to be what your audio comes out through, is through your audio interface. The audio interface I have, it's probably going to be hard to see right up here, is the Focusrite Scarlet. This is the 2i2. Um, that is my recommendation is the Focusrite Scarlet 2i2. I've been using it probably a month now, I think maybe a couple weeks and it's it's tried and true throughout the industry people use it and it's affordable it's one of the more affordable interfaces and you get really good sound out of it so Focusrite Scarlet um, you can go with the 2i2 if you need more than two inputs um, you can go with something like a 4i4 they also have a solo if you only need one input um, now the amount of inputs you get is going to you know determine how many instruments or microphones or things like that that you can plug in to your iPad when making music. I generally don't need more than two. I'm generally you know working um, as a solo person, but say I wanted to play in guitar and sing at the same time or something like that, um, having two inputs would be necessary for that. Um, so. Two inputs is always a good way to go if you can. Um, the next thing you're going to need, pretty important, is your studio headphones. So I'm a huge proponent of the Audio-Technica ATH M50Xs. Let me see if I can get that to focus. There we go. Yep. Um, these are the Bluetooth edition. So you can see there's you know a bunch of buttons here on the bottom. Um, and these get super killer battery life. Like I charge these once every several months. Um, that's if you want to use Bluetooth. Um, but as far as studio headphones go, these are also tried and true across the industry. They're also affordable. So you're going to notice kind of a theme going on um, when talking about my gear. Most of the gear I have is both tried and true and it's affordable. That's a really important um, thing to con consider when you're you know picking your gear is, is try to strike that balance between price and performance don't go overboard if you don't need to you know uh, one more thing on the headphones um, it's important it's it's crucial 
absolutely crucial to have some good headphones because if you don't know what your music sounds like, if, if you're using really cheap headphones, you honestly aren't going to know what your music sounds like. You're not going to be able to get a good mix because um, what you're hearing back is not what you're creating. Um, that's just kind of how it is. So on, on the budget side of things, the Audio-Technica are great. They have a nice flat balanced signal response, um, no boosted lows or highs or anything like that. Um, everything is nice and even so you can get a good mix, an accurate mix. Um, so after that, we've got your MIDI controller. Now the MIDI controller I use is the CME X Key Air. It is very, very thin um, and it's very portable. This is why I use this as an iPad music producer. Now I'm aware there are other options out there, but this CME X Key Air is a good one because of just how portable and light it is. It's not for everyone. I've done a review on this too. You can check that out in the description. I'll link that if I can remember. Got a lot of links to put in there. <laughs> but uh, um, some other options that are really thin and light and portable, something like the Sensil Morph, which I personally have yet to check out, but it looks really good. Also, there's you know cheaper ones that may be wired. The, this one in particular is Bluetooth. Now let me tell you why I think you should have a MIDI controller. Just typing and clicking in your music is not gonna cut it, or tapping in your music. Like, I did that for a long time and I wish, I wish I had gotten a MIDI controller sooner because you start to forget that you're making music if you're not using, you know, something that you can tactile touch, you know. It kind of disconnects you from the creative process. It's nice to have a MIDI controller so you can program in notes, especially if you're not, you know, so comfortable with your DAW yet and trying to figure out how to do all that. Um, a MIDI controller is a definite, definite win. So. Um, the last thing, um, I probably should have listed this earlier. Actually, there's two more things. You're going to want to get yourself a good USB hub because the things that you're going to need to plug into your iPad, if you don't get a hub, you're only going to be able to plug in one of those things at a time. And that goes for headphones too, especially if you're on something like the Pro line. There's no headphone jack anywhere around here. So you've got one USB-C port and that's it. Um, something like this guy right here. This is the hyperdrive USB-C hub and I plug it into the side of my uh, iPad here when I'm you know, not plugged in here. And you get yourself headphone jack, USB-A port, couple SD card slots, you get a USB-C for power and data, and then you get an HDMI cable, uh, HDMI port right here on the top, so you can plug in an external monitor or something like that. That kind of functionality is super helpful when you're making music, because I can plug in a MIDI controller right here um, I can plug in you know, my power supply here and I can plug in my headphones here and you're good to go. The last thing, the last thing I highly recommend, um, and this is for anybody, I highly recommend getting yourself a condenser mic specifically. Let me see if I can get this to where you guys can see it. Um, the mic I use is the Blue Spark. Um, I have this linked down in the description as well, but it is a condenser mic um, and it is XLR. Now there's some options when it comes to condenser mics and we'll talk about those right now. So with condenser mics, sometimes there's USB versions, um, which you can plug in just as a USB cable to the side of your iPad through a hub or something. You can also get yourself an XLR one, which is what I use. So you'll notice right up here, this cable right here is an XLR cable. I'll just unplug it so you can see it. One of these guys with three pins in it. That is an XLR cable. That's your standard you know, plug-in for microphones. And that goes straight into your audio interface. Now, you can also plug in regular quarter inch instrument cables into your audio interface. But I, I've seen a lot of good with either digital or analog condenser mics. And the Shure MV7 is a good mic that is, it can be digital or analog. Um, it has plugins for both, so that's a good option. Uh, but the mic that I have is the Blue Spark, and that's listed down in the description, solid mic. And the reason I recommend this for anyone, and not just people that say, oh, I'm a singer, I'm a rapper, is because you're gonna wanna, at some point, experiment with recording in your own sounds for making music. Now, I do, you know, I use samples, I use, you know, drum samples, but I do also program in my own percussion. So you'll catch me using my microphone over here to play in some tambourine or something, or play in some sleigh bells, or play some, some form of drum. Um, or 
playing my viola like I did on my last stream. These instruments back here. I'm recording that with my microphone. So even if you feel like you don't play, you know, a specific instrument really well, I would highly recommend at some point um, investing in a microphone so that you can, you know, get used to creating your own sounds. Even if you're just creating sounds with your mouth, get yourself some good, you know, quality audio. So. That wraps up the gear that you should definitely pick up as an iPad music producer. It's gonna make your life easier. You know, when you're hopping in the studio, getting ready to do what you need to do, you're gonna have everything that you need right there. Quick question of the day, since we were talking about gear, what is the piece of gear that you are most looking forward to adding to your music production setup? Um, you've got your eyes on it. What is that? Let me know down in the comments. I'll let the community know what you got your eyes on and maybe you guys can help each other out by letting each other know if some of this gear is legit. Um, if I see anything, I'll definitely respond. But until next time, creatives, go make something dope and I'll see you in the next video.